What's up guys, in today's episode I'm going to be explaining how to become a Toyota Master Tech in 2021 on paper. So let's get started. <laughs> yo, yo, yo. What is up guys? Nick Nakai here, well, Let's Drift Media. Thank you guys for coming back to the channel. It's your first time here, like always, please hit that subscribe button down below and leave a comment. It really helps out my YouTube algorithm, it really helps get my channel out there, you guys already know. So anyways, on today's episode, I'm gonna be explaining the steps it takes to become a Toyota Master Tech, at least, at least on paper. And if you guys have seen my previous video on how to pass ASC certifications, become a Master Tech, uh, the thing with the Toyota certification, it's very similar to ASC certifications as you can be a Toyota Master Tech on paper, but that does not mean you are a Toyota Master Tech. That does not mean you're the biggest badass and you can fix any car in the world. That just means you went through your schooling and you put in the time and did the learning to become that on paper. So I just wanted to make that clear. Uh, it's very easy to become a Toyota Master Tech. Well, not easy, it does take some time and effort, but it's just the certification that necessarily does not mean that you're the the top dog in the world just because you have it on paper just like being an asc master tech doesn't mean you're a master tech that just means you can take a test but anyways let's get started with today's video real quick though just want to give you guys a quick gift for sticking with the channel if you guys are looking to pass asc certifications i'm leaving a link down in my description right now for a little till the link expires, I guess. But it has all A1 through A8 and L1 study guide in there. So if you guys are looking to pass your ASC test, maybe you can download those study guides and hopefully it'll help you out. But although it is just a piece of paper, technically, uh, that being said, there are plenty of benefits to getting higher up in the Toyota level when it comes to certifications. Uh, main reason I would say to progress your levels up in Toyota would be for pay. Uh, the more certifications you get with your ASCs and Toyota certification level, the more pay you're going to be making per hour. So that's definitely a key benefit as to why you should get certified. Another reason, uh, it allows you to do more jobs at work. A lot of jobs at Toyota, it's like you have to be this level in order to do this recall or you have to be this level in order to do so and so, whatever, etc. So that's two reasons right there off the bat. Another reason it is really nice to have more certifications is because say you don't like the Toyota dealership you're at, uh, if you're a Toyota Master Tech, I guarantee like nine times out of 10, yeah, wherever you go apply, if they see your Toyota Master Tech, it's like almost for sure higher. Like there is not a lot of Master Techs out there right now. So having that status really just gives you the opportunity to basically go wherever you want. And say you weren't even going to a different Toyota, if you were going to a different uh, manufacturer or a different line uh, anywhere in the auto industry, if you're presenting yourself as an ASC master, Toyota master, uh, trust me, it just looks really good on paper and will really help benefit your chances of getting the job that you're looking for. All right, so this, I'll go ahead and pop this screen up on here so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Uh, this paper right here is pretty much your roadmap to wherever you want to go, what level you, of certification you want to be. You can see uh, there's maintenance, certified, expert level, master, then MDT, which is Master Diagnostic Technician. On mine, you can see pretty much everything's green. I did just finish the 673 three-day electronics class, so that actually got me to the master's class or master level as well as the required e-learning. But I'll kind of just break down the columns so you can kind of understand what's required to progress through the ranks. Um, on the left-hand side, you can see the, the columns required e-learning for maintenance level or higher. Same with underneath it for certified level, expert level, hybrid, expert, and master. All of those uh, items in that left list are basically e-learning modules. So those are going to be the modules you do on the Toyota website. They're kind of just like all online. Like you go through like a little slideshow course and it probably spends like about like 30 minutes to an hour on each course. And then you take a little five question, 20 question test at the end of it. So those are all e-learning modules um, that you would need to complete to correspond to which level of certification you want. Coming over to the right hand side, those are all uh, recalls, uh, service campaigns for Toyota. Those are just code names for whichever recall that's 
with that name. So it's like gonna be the airbag recalls, the fuel pump recalls, all of those. So that's kind of just the list of them in alphabetical order. It's not really related to what's on the left-hand side of it, but as you'll see, the more you progress, uh, say you become certified level, you're gonna get a lot more of those recalls greened out. Then you go to expert level, you're gonna get a couple more greened out and etc. But I will say on the recalls, I pretty much had them all green uh, certified to do once I became expert level in every category as well as hybrid. Uh, certified so master really doesn't give you too many more recalls that you're allowed to do maybe like one or two but for the most part you're gonna be able to pretty much all the recalls if you at least hit your expert level in all categories so yeah on the left those are all just online modules that are super easy to do you can do those at home or at work to meet whatever requirements you're trying to get to and on the right that's just the list of recalls that you're allowed to do so the real key part is the center section, the training requested. Uh, so you can see, you can become maintenance level just by completing all the e-modules on the left-hand side. But if you wanna become certified in engine, drivetrain, chassis, electrical, and hybrid, you actually have to have courses. But so say you never went to school or anything, you're just working as a Toyota tech, all of those big green boxes, those are actual classes you have to take, like you have to get sent out to training. So that's a lot of training. Uh, luckily for me, I went through the T10 program. So you can see the engine repair, manual trans, suspension, electrical one, engine control one, auto trans and brakes, as well as air conditioning. Each of those classes I took during the T10, I got credit for those little boxes. So I didn't even have to go to Toyota training for those. It just got credited from the T10 program. So that's one benefit if you're going to T10 that you automatically just get credited for those and you don't have to wait to get into those classes. Um, the only one would be is the hybrid class. That one you actually have to go to Toyota training. So besides that, you can pretty much become certified level without even working at Toyota technically, just going to your T10 program, you could already have all that done and not really have to worry about it. So I thought that was pretty cool. But if you didn't go through the T10 section, you can just get those middle section classes if you got sent out to those classes and you could be certified level in engine, drivetrain, chassis, and electrical. And if you wanted to be certified in hybrid, you would need also the air conditioning class and the hybrid one class. So if you got all of those done, you would automatically right there just be certified level in everything. So that's pretty, uh, pretty big because a lot of people aren't even certified in half of these courses right here. So if you had that alone, that put you in a better position than most people at your shop. So moving down to expert level, you can see there's a couple more e-modules you would have to do online. So like I said, those are super easy. And the classes down here, those ones, uh, the T10 will not really help you on those. Those are actual classes you have to get sent out to. So the three day engine control two, the four wheel drive system, the electrical two, and as well as the hybrid diagnosis. And real quick too, you guys can see all the ASCs are down in the expert level, but I will say because I got my ASCs before I was even expert level, and if you have all your ASCs, Toyota's gonna look at you and they're gonna push to get you in the classes before other people without all their ASCs. So having A1 through A8 ASCs is a big help and will really help get you in the classes and just give you overall priority versus other technicians in your dealership. And same with the e-learning modules on the left hand side. If you have like all your e-learnings up to like expert, like all done as long as well as your ASCs, trust me guys, it's gonna help you guys out so much. So you would have to do the e-modules, all those courses, and as well as the ASCs underneath. You can see for which corresponding section you would want. So let's just say you only have A1 and A8, and you have all the rest of the classes and engine control two, then you'll be expert in just engine but you wanna get expert in all five categories. So you would need the other courses and basically ASC Master Tech is what I'm saying, as well as those four classes in order to be expert level in everything. But I will say this, a lot of Toyota recalls, you kind of just need to be certified in most of these categories. Uh, expert level does kind of give you opportunity to do more work at Toyota, but it's really not till you get the hybrid certification that I, I would say in my experience made a big difference because I was expert level in engine, drivetrain, chassis, and electrical. 
and I was still kind of able to do the same work and it wasn't until I got the hybrid expert then it's kind of brought in like a whole lot more workload for me and a lot allowed me to make a little bit more hours because there was a lot of times where hybrids would come in and it's like there's only so many hybrid techs that are allowed to do these recalls or allowed to even work on hybrids and it just ended up working out pretty great for me. So once you made it this far, you got all those four classes, you got your ASC Master Tech, uh, you'll be certified everything expert, hybrid, engine, drivetrain, chassis, electrical, and that's pretty awesome right there. There's actually not that many people expert level in all of those, including hybrid, so yeah. And then once you have all that, uh, the last thing, or second to last, would be Master Tech. In order to become Master, of course you have to have everything that I just talked about. And then there's gonna be a Smart Key class, which you have to go to training. And then there's a separate Body Electronics class, which you also have to go to training. And that was the class that I recently just took and was pretty awesome. Taught me a lot about CAN bus communications, how to use a PicoScope. And I think it's a great class, really teaches you a lot as well as one more e-learning module. The thing with that e-learning module right there, you guys can see the dealer product report training. You cannot do that e-learning until you've taken Smart Key and the electronics class. So once you take both those classes, that module will unlock. You could do that in like an hour or two, and then you're master tech, master Toyota tech. After that is MDT, and really since you have everything else done, you have all your modules, all your classes done, all you gotta do is take the ASC L1 certification, which I plan on doing very soon. So that pretty much sums it up. Oh, one thing I did forget is in order to become Master Tech, you have to have five years of Toyota experience. But the cool thing is, Toyota starts counting your experience as soon as you start working at a Toyota dealership. So. Um, if you're changing oil for two, three years, uh, those three years are already counting towards your tenure. And once you do go to become master tech, by then I feel like you'll probably more than likely have five years of experience. There's only a couple people I've seen that have got all their certifications before they had their time in Toyota. But yeah. But that pretty much sums it up for this episode. Uh, Pretty excited I got the master status. I mean, again, it is just on paper. Like I said, I know I still have a lot to learn as far as when it comes to diagnosing vehicles and stuff, working on Toyotas. But it feels pretty good to at least be able to say I'm a Toyota master tech. So really wanted to make this video to kind of guide you guys in case that's something you guys are looking to try to do. And hopefully this video kind of made it more clear on what exactly you need to do in order to get to there. So that's all I got for this video, guys. Drop a comment if you found this useful information. Um, but that's pretty much it. So catch you guys next time. Peace! Hey, feel I'm in the mood for a switcher. I hit the function, hit the rose till I hiccup. I hit the stage and leave with money that's a sticker. She picture perfect, so I told him I'm a flicker.